Okay, so what we have is a hybrid off-grid solar power system. We can draw power from the grid when we need it, but we're not net metered, so we don't push power back onto the grid. We have about 8,280 watts on the collector. The inverter is 8,800 watts continuous and about double that peak. And the battery bank is 740 amp hours. We also have a lot of transfer switches. That gives us a lot of flexibility in that we can put any circuit on the utility or the solar. Okay, so let's start with a quick summary. We were running about 2,000 kilowatt hours a month before we installed solar, and now we're down to about 200 kilowatt hours a month. And let's take a look at where that's coming from. So about 700 kilowatt hours a month is coming from the solar power that we installed about 175 kilowatt hours from the solar batch heater, it's the water heater, and then I'm going to guess maybe 500 kilowatt hours from the added insulation, switching out LEDs and adding power strips on TVs and computers, which leaves us with a missing 425 kilowatt hours that I'm going to attribute to just other miscellaneous conservation. Okay, so let's take a closer look. Okay, so here's our electric bills for the past five and a half years. The first four years, 2013, 14, 15, and 16, is before we installed solar. So if we start in January, and we got 2017 and 2018, and we see that, uh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting some pretty good savings. Went from about uh, 2,100 kilowatt hours down to maybe 14. So that's, that's what the solar has helped us out. And the main reason it wasn't better than that is that um, we don't have a way to use the solar to heat the house. So the heaters are all on the utility. And so what you're seeing here, these are just the base loads, like refrigerator, freezer, lights, TVs, computers, all that kind of stuff. So you can think of that as the base load savings from solar. And then we go to February. And so now we don't have as much heat and we're seeing a bigger savings from solar. And that's a pretty good savings there. And same thing in March and April. Let's just look at 2017 for right now. Big jump down. Same thing here. And here. And then... But then it's, it is climbing up in the summer. So even with the solar, it climbed up over the summer, and that's because all these big air, we have three big air conditioners, and they all run off of the utility in the summertime, so at least last year. And so those uh, bills did go up. Still a lot less than they were. Okay, until July, we added our first window unit. So by adding that window unit, now one of the big three air conditioners is going to be running a lot less. And so you see that's a pretty good savings now. So that's the base loads plus one window air conditioner. And same thing here. And then we get out to September and we added a second window unit. So now we've got two of the big air conditioners running a lot less because we're running two window units off the solar. And we're seeing pretty good savings. Okay, then the next month we added uh, the water heater, we put it on solar. So solar voltaic, the electric solar power system is running the electric water heater now. Not 100%, like I still switch it to the utility once in a while, but um, it's on there now. And that's, that's a pretty good savings there too, so see that coming down. So then we can start getting the cold weather and have to run those heaters on the utility again. We have no way to heat the house with the solar. Now we roll into 2018. Same problem, no heater on solar. And then we add a solar thermal preheater to the water heater. So now from this point on the water heater is almost never on the utility. So that's probably 20 bucks a month right there. So look, oh, we're getting better, better than last year. Going through March and April, improving, big improvement. Even over last year, let alone no solar was way up here at 1,600 kilowatt hours, and we drop all the way down to about 250. 
And then uh, here we added a third window air conditioner. So now I've got all three of the big air conditioners are running like at half or less. And that's why we get this big savings between that, the pre-water heater, and all the base loads and everything are all on solar now. So I'm really starting to push that solar a lot harder this year than we did last year, as you can see. Big jump. So June, same thing. It did get really hot, so more of the big air, the big air conditioners had to run a little more because these three little window units can't carry the big the house uh, when it's that hot out. But I expect next month we're, we're on track to hitting about the same thing. So, okay, so overall we've cut our utility bills from about $300, a little over $300 a month with no solar, all the way down to about, well, this is 30 to $75 a month. Okay, which is great, which would be, you know, over $200 a month savings, which is $2,400 a year. The system cost us 16000 to install. So you're looking at an eight-year payback, except that's not really true. <laughs> so the one thing we have to point out here is that not all of this savings is actually due to the solar power. I mean, and partly there's a, you know, I built this solar thermal water heater. That's $20 a month of it. And it, probably a big chunk, a pretty good chunk of it is just from conservation. So when you have solar, you automatically kind of go into this mode where you just start saving more. And, you know, so we, we switched to LED lights. We added more insulation, put power strips on TVs and computers and stuff like that. And so... I mean, you can do that without solar. So if you just want to save money, that's just a no-brainer. You go out and switch to LED, insulation, power strips, that kind of stuff, and you can save, I'd say 25% of it is probably just from doing that. And that's probably less than $1,000. So uh, for less than $1,000, you get 25% savings, and then if you want another 50% savings, then spend 16000 on a solar power system. <laughs> so... But overall, it will pay for itself. Um, you know, well, it'll pay off in eight years, but really the, just the solar portion probably take 12 years to pay off. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.